In one of the previous video lectures, we have gone through Chinese remainder theorem. I've explained what Chinese remainder theorem is and what it is used for. So we basically try to solve a sequence of congruence relations or a system of congruences by using Chinese remainder theorem. So if you are given a problem, say x is congruent to 2 mod 5 and x is congruent to 1 mod 6 and so on and I need to find a value x. So we use Chinese remainder theorem. Now if a problem is given directly we can use Chinese remainder theorem but there are also a few interesting problems where the problems are worded. So there are statements and from the statement we need to get these congruence equations and then we need to solve by using Chinese remainder theorem. And these problems are very interesting. So let us go through a few statement problems and use Chinese remainder theorem to solve them. So the first one, the first one states that there are three children in a family and their feet are of length 5 inches, 7 inches and 9 inches long and they measure the length of a dining room of their house using their feet. They find that there are 3 inches left over. How long is the dining room? So this is a dining room. So the length of the dining room is measured by the foot of the child. So the child uses his foot to measure the entire length. So this is child 1. His foot measures 5 inches. So he measures the length. So 5 inches and then 5 inches and so on. And at the end, 3 inches are left. Now the same thing is done by the second child. So he measures by his foot. 7 inches, 7 inches and so on and then, then again 3 inches are left and then you have the third child the length of his foot is 9 inches so 9 and then again 9 and then again there are 3 inches left so the question is what is the length of the room right okay so now let me define the length of the room as x so what is left? The left distance is 3 and when the child measures the distance by his foot, the length of his foot is 5. So we are operating in mod 5, isn't it? Okay. So now what about the second child? Again, the left over distance is 3 and he is measuring with his foot which is of length 7. So we are operating in mod 7 and x happens to be the length and again x is congruent to 3 which is the leftover distance in mod 9. So I need to find the value x such that x minus 3 is divisible by 5, x minus 3 is divisible by 7 and x minus 3 is divisible by 9 because they all measure using their foot of length 5 inches, 7 inches and 9 inches and at the end, what is the remainder? What is the remaining length? The remaining length happens to be 3 inches. So now the entire problem statement has been converted into a set of 3 congruence equations and we need to solve them. And this can be solved by using Chinese remainder theorem. So let me define A1. A1 is 3 which is equal to A2 which is equal to A3. So this is A1, A2, A3. And what is M1? M1 is 5, M2 is 7, and M3 is 9. And what is the first step? We need to calculate M, which is M1 into M2 into M3, which is 5 into 7 into 9. So I get 5 into 7 into 9, which is 315. So since there are three equations, there are three steps. So each step is repeated. So step 1 calculate m1 such that m1 is capital M by m1. So it is 315 divided by 5. So what do I get? I get the value as 63. So now m1, m1 is congruent to 1 mod m1. We need to find m1 where m1 is the inverse of m1. Which means 63 into m1 should be congruent to 1 mod m1 is 5. 
So 63 in mod 5 is 3. So 3 into n1 should give me 1 in mod 5. So 3 into what will give me 1 in mod 5? Very simple. 3 into 2 is 6. 6 in mod 5 is 1. So n1 is 2. So 3 into 2 is 6. So n1 is 2. So now let me write the values. n1 is 63 and n1 is 2. So this step has to be repeated again. And we need to find the value of n2 and n2 and m3 and n3. So step 2 find the value of n2 where n2 is m by n2 so what is m m is 315 divided by the mod value 7 and when i divide 315 by 7 what do we get we get 45 and now m2 into n2 should be congruent to 1 mod n2 so what is n2? 45 into n2 should give me 1 in mod 7. Now what is 45 in mod 7? If I write the equivalent, it becomes much easier. So we know that 42 is a multiple of 7, so the remainder is 3. So I have 3 into n2 should be congruent to 1 mod 7. So 3 into what will give me 1 mod 7? So we know that 3 5s are 15, so 15 in mod 7 is 1. So n2 is 5. So n2 is 5. So 5 is the inverse of 3, and 3 is the inverse of 5 in mod 7. Let me write the values of n2, which is 45, and n2 is 5. So now we move on with the last one. Step 3. Find m3 which is m by m3 which is 315 divided by 9 so what do i get so 315 divided by 9 gives me 35 so we have m3 n3 must be congruent to 1 mod m3 or what is m3 35 into n3 must be congruent to 1 mod 9 so what is 35 in mod 9? So 35 in mod 9 gives me 8 into n3 must be congruent to 1 mod 9. So now the question is what is n3? So we know that 8 into 8 is 64 and 63 is a multiple of 9. So therefore 64 in mod 9 gives me 1 is the remainder. So n3 is 8. So the inverse of 8 is 8 in mod 9. We have m3 is 35. And what is n3? It is 8. Now we need to find the value of x. So how do I find the value of x? x is summation over i, a i, m i, n i, mod n. So which means x is equal to a1, m1, n1 plus a2 m2 n2 plus a3 m3 n3 operating in mod m which is mod of course it is mod 315 so we are operating in mod m so this is n here so now let me write all the values so i have listed all the values here so we need to write all the values and calculate them so x is equal to a1 is 3 into, so 3 is common because A1, A2, A3 is all 3. So M1 into N1, so it is 63 into 2 plus 45 into 5 plus 35 into 8 in mod 315. Okay, so we are operating in mod 315. So when you find the value, what do we get? We get the value as 1893 mod 315. So 1893 in mod 315 will give me a value equal to 3. So x is 3. So this is the smallest value. Length of the room cannot be equal to 3 inches. 
So therefore, how do I get the next value? I get the next value by adding 315 to 3. So the length of the room is 3 plus 315. So it is 318 inches. So you can convert it to feet or the required uh, unit as given in the problem. So the length of the room is 318 inches. So this is how we solve the problem. So let's take another problem, another statement problem, which we have to solve using Chinese remainder theorem. The next problem states that if eggs are removed from a basket, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 at a time, then respectively 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 0 eggs remain in the basket. So what is the least number of eggs that could have been in the basket? So there is a basket full of eggs. So what is the problem statement? It's been stated that you have a basket full of eggs. And if I'm removing two eggs at a time, if I go on removing two eggs at a time, at the end, there is one egg left. In the next case, I have the same number of eggs in the basket. If I go on removing three eggs at a time, I'm left with two. If I remove four eggs at a time, I'm left with three. If I remove five eggs, I'm left with four. Six, I'm left with five. And seven, I'm left with none. Right? So now, these are the mod values. So you would have got the hint that these are the mod values. So therefore, how many equations do we have? So this definitely is an equation. So x, so let the number of x in the basket be x. So x is congruent to 1 mod 2. Because if I go on removing 2x at a time, I'm left with 1. Next, uh, the next equation is x is congruent to, if I go on removing 3x at a time, I'm left with 2. This combination is not considered because we find that the mod value 4 is nothing but a multiple of 2, so we do not consider this. The next one is if I remove 5x from the basket, I am left with 4. Again, 6 is not considered because 6 mod 6 is definitely a multiple of 3, so we avoid that. There is no need to take or consider that equation. And then if I remove 7x at a time, I am left with 0. We need to find the value of x. So what is the value of a1, a2, a3 and a4? So a1 is 1, a2 is 2, a3 is 4 and a4 is 0 and m1 is 2, m2 is 3 m3 is 5 and m4 is 7. So now let's calculate the value of m. So m is m1 into m2 into m3 into m4 which is 2 into 3 into 5 into 7. So that gives me a value of 2, 1, 0. Step 1 find m1 which is m by m1 which is 2 1 0 divided by 2 so I get 1 0 5 so now we need to find the value of n1 isn't it so let me write the general m i n i must be congruent to 1 mod m i so I will not repeat writing this expression so 1 out 5 into n1 is congruent to 1 mod 2 so what is 1 and 5 in mod 2? It is 1 into n1 is congruent to 1 mod 2. So what is n1? 1 into 1 will give me 1. So therefore, n1 is 1 and m1 is 1 not 5. The next step, I need to calculate m2. So what is m2? m2 is m by m2 m2 is m by m2. So what do we get? We get 2, 1, 0 divided by 3. So the value we get is 70. So 70 into n2 must be congruent to 1 mod 3. 
So 70 in mod 3 is 1 because 69 is a multiple of 3. So 1 into n2 is equal to, is congruent to 1 mod 3. So therefore n2 is 1. 1 into 1 is 1. So therefore n2 is 1. So n2 is 1 and what is n2? m2 is 70. Step 3. I have m3 which is m by m3 which is 210 divided by the value of m which is 5. So I get 42. So m3 is 42. I need to find 42 into n3 must be congruent to 1 mod 5. Now what is 42 in mod 5? It is 2. So 2 into n3 is congruent to 1 mod 5. What is the inverse of 2 in mod 5? It is 3 because 2 into 3 is 6. 6 in mod 5 is 1. So n3 is 3 and m3 is 42. So let me write it here. So I have n3 is 3 and m3 is 42. Now can you tell me whether I need to proceed with step 4? Now what is step 4? Step 4 I have to calculate. So now the question is do I need to proceed with step 4 and calculate n4 and m4? It is not required because x is summation ai mi ni mod m. So it's going to be a1, m1, n1 plus and so on plus a4, m4, n4. What is a4? a4 is 0. So that entire term becomes equal to 0. So there is no need for me to calculate these values. So with these values of a1, a2, a3 and m1, m2, a3 and n1, n2, a3 I can find the value of x. So x is nothing but it is a1 which is 1 into m1 is 1 or 5 into n1 is 1 plus a2 is 2 into n2 is 70 into n2 is 1 plus then I have a3 which is 4 into n3 is 42 into n3 is 3 in mod m. What is m? m is the value which is 210. So when I calculate and I get the answer as 749 in mod 210 or which gives me a value of 119 in mod 210. So I need to find the least number of x, isn't it? So 749 in mod 210 gives me 119 in mod 210. So this is the least number of x which is present in the basket such that when I remove 2x at a time, I am left with 1. I remove 3 at a time, I am left with 2. I remove 5 at a time, I am left with 4. I remove 6 at a time, I am left with 5. So you can check this value x will satisfy all the congruence relations including these two which we have not considered. Okay. So in this lecture we have solved two statement problems wherein we have to use Chinese remainder theorem to solve those problems. And in the next video segment we shall solve two more statement problems and we have to use Chinese remainder theorem to get the answer. So do check out that video. The link has been given in the description. Do not forget to watch it. Two interesting problems. And to watch all the other videos in cryptography and network security, click on the i button or go through the playlist cryptography. And thanks for watching.